Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So, if you guys would do my Europa League predictions for the 23 24 season, so remember, guys, let me know your predictions, comments below, the knock around playoffs. And please try to like and subscribe as well. Let's try to get up to 10 likes, guys, for the Europa League, guys. So, starting with the first game which we got here, it is Feyenoord versus Roma. It's a repeat of the Europa League quarterfinals last season, and of course, the Conference League final two seasons ago. Feyenoord, man. They're looking good this season. I don't know, just Arna Slot's done a fantastic job with the team. Uh, the team has been re really good this season. Even though they're not first right now in the league, they're still doing really well this season. I believe they're second place. Obviously, they got some important players like Bill Hull has been great. Gertruda has been amazing. They obviously have Santiago Jimenez, Uada, Paxio. This team is a stack. As far as Roma, Roma, it's not been a great season for Roma. Roma, this season, has been struggling mid-season. Obviously, side Jose Mourinho. They brought in uh de rossi and de rossi's done a good job with the team the team is now looking more vibely more rampant more energetic more more cohesive now the key for roma is that have they been challenged yet and i think over this i think this weekend they're playing against inter so i'm recording this before they play inter that's going to be give us a good good account to see what they're going to get because for me they haven't really been challenged their new coach and i'm really keen to see how they do and I think for me, as much as I want to see Feyenoord get revenge, I think Roma's going to do it. I think Roma's going to do it simply because of second legs at home. I think the second leg at home is such a huge advantage. And the only way I could see Feyenoord going through is that they win the first leg by a 2-0 margin. If they do not win the first leg by two or more goals, I think it's really going to be tough for them. Because Roma, we know how good they are at home in the Stadio de Olimpico. And um, yeah, I just think it's going to be difficult for Feyenoord. So... Hopefully, Feyenoord can prove me wrong because I want Feyenoord to get revenge this time around. Uh, but I do think Roma will prevail and move on to the next round. Next up, it is Galatasaray versus Sparta. Galatasaray, man, this is a team that plays very expansive football, very much uh, attacking based football. They have some credible players like Mari Cardi has been gr great. Hakim Ziyech has been there. And this team is looking really good in terms of attacking talents. As for Spar Prague, this is a team that's mostly local based players, not a, a lot of foreign based players. They do have Porcedo who is a decent player from Ecuador, of course, a decent defender. And yeah, I think for Galatasaray, of course, are the heavy favorites, but you never, you can never understand these Czech teams. These Czech teams are very difficult to break down and traditionally, defensively, are very difficult. So I do think they can give a good game, but ultimately Galatasaray should be advancing here. Um, although I will say this, though, if Galatasaray do not win the first leg, they may potentially be in trouble because the second leg is in Czech Republic, not in Turkey. So Galatasaray have to win the home game. If Galatasaray win the home game, I would say they're in a good position. But if they fail to win the home game, uh, I think Spar Prague might actually be the favorite. So it all hinges upon the first sight, but I expect Galatasaray to win. Moving on, we have is AC Milan versus Rennes. Milan this season have been kind of up and down this season. Injuries have been kind of affecting them this season. And obviously, you can tell the Milan this season, the Serie A has not really been it. You know, I, I've been really disappointed with Pioli. I thought they... I thought you, uh, the Serie A, they would do much better. But it turns out they haven't, you know. Uh, and so now they have a great opportunity in the Europa League. And maybe they might go all in for the Europa League because they're one of the strongest teams left in the competition. Obviously, they had an insane summer. They brought in the likes of Christian Pulisic, uh, Jacuzzi, um, you know, brought in some big players. Um, and I think for Milan, they're definitely one of the favorites. As for Rennes, it's a very much team that is very much local-based players. Obviously, they got Torreira, um, uh Terrier, sorry, not ter 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 yeah, Terrier, Martin Terrier, and obviously Amini Guri. And yeah, I think for Milan, they should be able to get the better of Rens. I, I don't really rate this Rens team that highly, so I think Milan should do this. But uh, like I said, though, if Rens can get a result ag against Milan away, the second leg is at home, which could be very, very interesting. But yeah, I do think Milan's going to get the job done. Next up, it is Young Boys versus Sporty. Obviously, for Young Boys, they did well in the group. You know, managed to get and managed to get the better of Stravana Zvezda, four points against them. And I believe they're the Serbian champs, so you have to give them that. Obviously, they have one big player named Elia, who has been their main goal scorer for them this season. And as for sporting, they are obviously great as well. Obviously, got Gokarez that's there, and they got Indiasio is also there as well. So I think the sporting team have too much talent, and I think they should be able to beat young boys. I think young boys will make things competitive, but ultimately, sporting should be able to. Get the job done. I think it's a favorable matchup for Sporting. So, yeah, Sporting should be able to get the job done. Next up, it is Lons versus Freiburg. In my opinion, this is the toughest match to call. I think this is a match that it can go either way. I'm not really sure which to pick here. Uh, as for Lons, they've been great this se you know, great in the uh, the Champions League. They managed to get to the Europa League ahead, like Sevilla. Managed to beat Sevilla in the final match day. 
They got some good players like Wahi's also Wahi's a fantastic goal scorer for them. Samba's a very decent goalkeeper. And this Freiburg team, they got some good players like Joan is there, Gunter is there. It's a 50-50 match, but I'm gonna go with Lons. I think Lons for me, they have proven it more, and I've been really more impressed with them. As for Freiburg, they are a good team, but I just I feel like for me, Lons have more. I feel like Lons are just better defensively. I would say Freiburg are better attacking wise, but defensively, I've been more impressed with Lons. But this was a match that could go either way. I wouldn't be surprised if Freiburg gets the job done, but I'm going to go with Lons for this prediction. Next up, it is um, Cor Braga versus Corbe. Braga this season is a team you never underestimate. This is a team that did so well last season um, in the Euro uh, Conference League. You know, I will, yeah, oh, sorry, they're in the Europa League, but I think they dropped down the Conference League. They didn't do so well in the first stage. Uh, but remember, this is a team that has won the Europa League because I believe a few seasons ago they made it all the way to the quarterfinals and lost out to eventual finalist Rangers. You know, Brog have some decent players. Obviously, you got um, Banza is also a great player. Um, he's obviously the big gig guy. And yeah, I just think for Braga, man, they're such a difficult team. The Portuguese team, you know, very difficult to break down. You can't underestimate this team. And for Corbeck, it's a very much local based players. It's not a lot of uh, foreign based players in their team. So I think for Braga, they should feel confident with this matchup i think they are, they are happy with this matchup as long as they get the job done at home the second leg in azerbaijan they should have enough quality to make it through so just don't put yourselves in a position where you need to win the second leg so if you could just win the first leg get a draw the second leg that'll be enough to advance but yeah braga should advance with this one next up is Shakhtar versus marseille Shakhtar or Donetsk, man i was really impressed with they did in the champions and Shakhtar was fantastic in the champions they put up a really good fight in that group with consisting of Barcelona and Porto and gave some really good, really good um, showdowns. I managed to beat Barcelona, which is a very incredible testament. And I feel like for Shakhtar, this is a team that always over, um, always um, overperforms. You know, obviously players like Seacons obviously have been great. And even though this team is like completely different to the team they had a few years ago, the Shakhtar team, they still have the energy. They still have the spirit, you know. As for Marseille, even though this team is stacked on paper, you have the likes of Aubameyang, Onahi. Um, there's some other uh, amazing players they have on this team. This team hasn't been from Hormuel. The league on this season has been so underwhelming. So for this one, while I would normally pick Marseille, I actually believe we're going to see an upset. And I actually think Shakhtar is going to prevail. I just feel like for me, the Shakhtar team, they're just something special about them. And I have a feeling they may go far in this Europa League. They may be the dark horse that nobody expects. So I'm going to go with Shakhtar to advance for this one to move on to the next stage. Next up is, is uh, Benfica versus Toulouse. Obviously, it's the final matchup here. Benfica, man, the Champions League was disastrous. Was so, so abysmal. That be that Champions League campaign was abysmal. They did rectify things, though, in the end. Managed to be in Salzburg and managed to get a draw against Inter. Uh, obviously, players look out for, obviously, for Benfica. Or, obviously, um, you got Kochu as well. That's the main guy. Then, obviously, Di Maria. Um, that's also there. Otamendi is also there as well. And for Toulouse, man. You got Zalinga that's there. Rest is, is there. And yeah, I think for Benfica, they should be comfortable with this one. They should be heavy favorites against Toulouse. They have a way better team. And as long if Benfica can get just get their striker, that's going to be the key thing. Because that's what Benfica really struggled in the Champions League. Just not having that clinical number nine. You know, and they did sell one of the best players to FC Dallas. Oh, well, yeah, they sold. But I they've been doing pretty well in the league. So I think they'll have enough qualities in the Europa League. And I think the Europa League should be doable for them. So those are my Europa League predictions, guys. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. And also one last thing before you head out, guys. Let me know if there's any major talking points I missed with each of the teams. I hope you guys did enjoy.